So, super quick video on ducking. And one of the main problems is that we hyper-focus on some areas of ducking in combat sports, but we neglect or very often neglect another really important area. So, again, if you're ducking, you're bending at the knees, you're not leaning your waist forward, your knees are dropping, elbows in tight, and you bend at the knees. Boom, like so. Boom, nice effective duck, and you can go as low or as shallow as that duck requires. Obviously, the lower you go, often the safer you are, because the more clearance, but then the harder it is to counter attack. Whereas if you duck just a little, and you bounce an inch, below where the attack's coming from, that might allow you a much better response. But my, my advice is this, often when we talk about ducking, we focus on bending at the knees, not at the waist. And we talk about being on balance, those are important things. But an area that people forget is that when you're ducking, like so, they tend to keep their hands level to where they would have been standing. So if their hands are here and they duck, they keep them in the same place. My advice to you is, if you are ducking, raise the hands higher. So if I'm ducking, the hands, especially when gloved, are protecting the upper portions of the face. So as opposed to ducking as one unit, as I go down, the hands go up. And it seems a daft skill, but if I duck down and keep my hands level as they were, if I see opponents ducking and I'm so inclined, I'm gonna start throwing downward orientated bombs. I'm gonna try and crack you on. Because if you've dipped low and you've left this maxiofacial area free with no defense, there's nothing stopping me firing down a bit of brimstone as you duck. If as I duck, the hands are elevated, when I want to fire back, they're a little bit closer to the target and they prevent your ability to effectively put those shots down range. So it's just a small thing. As you're ducking, make sure your hands are raising. Whilst bending at the knees and not at the waist is important, it's not the only thing. So make sure we don't over obsess over one area to the detriment of the other. As you duck, raise your hands. As you duck, Raise your hands, big duck, little duck, whatever, and however you're doing it, whether you're doing it as a duck and a roll, or whether you're just doing a simple bum, straight down, get in the habit of bringing those hands up as you go down to prevent the brimstone coming down on you. So, if you're ducking, two things are gonna happen. People are gonna fire down, or they're gonna fire up. They're gonna to start to fire up a cut at you. So again, as you raise this, I advise you tighten the gap like so. So if I keep a space and then duck, even if I raise my hands, I've still precision guided that uppercut. So if you wanna add layers, first layer, yes. Bend at the knees, be strong, be on balance. Second layer, as you go down, the hands come up. Third layer, as you go down, hands go up and the forearms contract somewhat to mitigate against stuff coming up the middle. Sounds small, but these are important things. If you duck and they clock it, fire's coming down or fire is coming up. And you need to build into your duck instinctive defenses against it. So the hands raise as you go down, forearms contract as you go down. Whoa. and then I'm optimized to then fire back with as little risk as possible of an uppercut coming through the middle or overhand shots raining down. If I just duck like this, I'm always gonna be at risk in this region for really powerful downward sloping shots. So duck scientifically, get playing with it, experiment with it. It's the underloved defensive boxing we love shoulder rolls and parries and slips and all this fancy stuff and cross arms. There's a lot to be said for the old fashioned. Get out of the way, duck, pop back up and put some fire down range. Give it a play.